In this lesson, we're going to be factoring the difference of two squares, factoring perfect square trinomials, and using factoring to solve real life problems. Factoring the difference of two squares. You can use special product patterns to factor polynomials. So if you see down here, we've looked at these before. In this case, we have a difference of squares. So a squared minus b squared. Well, if you remember, that's just what happens when we do a plus b, that quantity times the quantity a minus b. Okay, so right away, if you see something like this, you can immediately write it in factored form as a plus b times the quantity a minus b. Now, the math example is we have two squares here, the difference of two squares. So I can just rewrite x squared minus 9 as x plus 3 times the quantity x minus 3. So for example 1, we're going to factor x squared minus 25 for part A, and then for part B, 4z squared minus 1. Anyway, we're going to start with part A here, so A x squared minus 25. Well, notice this is a difference of two squares, okay? I have x squared, okay? And then I have 25, okay? So remember, I can just rewrite this as x minus the square root of 25, which is just 5, times x plus 5, right? And if you FOIL this out or just know your special product pattern, you're going to end up with x squared minus 25. And I'll let you do that out on your own if you like. For part B, I have... 4z squared minus 1. Well, this is also a difference of squares, okay? Well, 4z squared, if I took the square root or took this whole thing to the 1 half power, I would get 2z, okay? And then 1 is also a perfect square. So you can think of this as 2z minus 1 times 2z plus 1, okay? And it doesn't matter which one you have first. You could put your 2z plus 1 before your 2z minus 1. Um, either way, this is the factored version of the quantity 4z squared minus 1. And now we're done with example 1. For example, two, we're going to use a special product pattern to evaluate the expression 54 squared minus 48 squared. Okay, So I'm just going to rewrite this as a difference of squares. So we'll do 54 and then minus 48 times 54 plus 48. All right, well, 54 minus 48 is 6. So now I just have to do 6 times the sum of 54 and 48 which is going to be 102, because 4 plus 8 is 12, and then 4 plus 5 is 9, and then you carry over the 1, you get 102. Anyway, 6 times 102 is going to be 612. So that is how to solve this expression, evaluate this expression, I should say, um, using our difference of two squares factoring method. And now we're done with this one. Factoring perfect square trinomials. If you remember, our perfect square trinomial pattern are as follows, okay? So if we expanded out a plus b quantity squared, we would get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, okay? And then a minus b is the same thing, except for this middle term is just going to be negative. Okay? And then for our math example with algebra, we have x squared plus 6x plus 9. Well, that's going to factor out to x plus 3 quantity squared. And if you kind of go backwards, this is what we'd get uh, if we use, like, the FOIL method or the distributive property. Okay, and then same thing with the minus sign here for our middle term. Then we're going to get the negative sign here in our parentheses. One thing to note is uh, if you're going to be able to recognize this pattern quickly, it's very helpful if you just look at the first term and the last term. If they are both perfect squares, then it's going to be easier to tell whether or not this middle term is going to work for this pattern. Okay, So check this first term, check this last term if they're both perfect squares, then see if this middle term works. See if that is going to be two times the square root of your first term, or I should, should stay down here, two times the square root of your first term, and then the square root of your second term. And then you'll know that you can factor it into this perfect square trinomial here. For example, three, we're going to factor each polynomial. And in part A, I have n squared plus 8n plus 16. If you remember, what we should check for first is, is my first term a perfect square and is my second term a perfect square? And in this case, n squared and 16 are both perfect squares. So now I want to check if the square root of these, okay, so the square root of n squared, I'll just write that down. You don't need to write this down. But this is going to be n, right, just the positive square root. The positive square root of 16 is equal to 4. Okay, and I want to see, does this number times this times 2 equal my middle term? And it does, right? 2 times n is 2n times 4 is 8n. So I know that this is a perfect square trinomial, which means I can rewrite it in factored form as just n and then plus 4 quantity 
squared. I know it's plus four because this middle term is positive. If this middle term was negative, I know it would be minus four. Anyway, now we're done with part A. For part B, I have 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. Once again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to see if my first term is a perfect square, which it is. My coefficient's a perfect square, and then I have x squared. Okay? And then I want to see if my last term is a perfect square. So I have positive 9 here, and 9 is a perfect square. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the square root of my first term. So the square root of 4x squared is just 2x, right? Because you take the square root of the number part and then the variable part. And I'm just dealing with positive square roots at first. You don't need to deal with the negatives until the very end. And then I have the square root of 9, which is equal to 3. Okay, So I want to see, does 2x times 3 times 2 equal 12x? And it does. Okay, So 2x times 3 is 6x times 2 is 12x. But since there's a minus x, instead of adding 2x plus 3, kind of like I did in the last example, I'm going to be subtracting. I'm going to be doing 2x minus 3. So this factored form is going to be 2x minus 3 quantity squared. And now we're done with part B. For example 4, we're going to be solving this polynomial equation. So I'm just going to rewrite it as x squared plus 2 thirds x plus 1 ninth equals 0. Now, there are ways to solve this without getting rid of these fractions, but you haven't learned those yet. Okay. So in order to get rid of all of these fractions, I want to multiply by the least common multiple of the denominator, or the least common denominator. And that's going to be 9 here, because if I multiply by 9 by each term, it's going to wipe out this 1 ninth, and it's going to wipe out this 3. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 9. And notice, nothing is going to change on the right side. It's still going to equal 0, which is what we want. So now I get 9x squared. And then, remember, I have to distribute this to every term. But 9 times 2 thirds, well, the 9 and the 3 would cancel out. And we'd get a 3 times 2x, which would give me plus 6x. And then 9 times 1 ninth is just 1. And that'll equal 0. Now, I could factor this using my grouping methods. But if you notice, this is actually going to be a perfect square trinomial. Right? My first term, 9x squared, that's a perfect square. My third term, positive 1, that's a perfect square as well. And I want to see if the square root of this term times the square root of this term times 2 equals this term. Okay? Well, the square root of 9x squared is 3x. The square root of 1 is 1. So 3x times 1 is 3x. But then times 2, that gives me 6x. So I know that this is going to be a perfect square trinomial. So I can just rewrite this as my first term square root, which is 9x squared. So the square root of that is going to be 3x. And then since this middle term is positive, we're going to be adding our two terms. Plus, and then the square root of 1 is just 1. Okay, So it's that quantity squared equals 0. Now, this is a case we're going to have repeated roots. So I really only need to set 3x plus 1 equal to 0. Okay, you could do it twice, but uh, that's really not going to change anything. So I'm just going to set 3x plus 1 equals 0. I'll subtract 1 on both sides to get 3x equals negative 1. Then I'll divide 3. So my answer to this equation, after all that junk, is going to be x equals negative 1 third. Now you could plug this back in to your original equation if you wanted, uh, just to check to see if you got it right. And I'll let you do that on your own if you want. But anyway, now we're done with example 4. For example 5, a bird picks up a golf ball and drops it while flying. The function represents the height y in feet of the golf ball t seconds after it is dropped. The ball hits the top of a 32-foot tall pine tree. After how many seconds does the ball hit the tree? Well, notice we have this equation here. It's kind of small, so I'll rewrite it. It's y equals 81 minus 16 t squared. Okay, so y equals 81 minus 16 t squared. Okay, And we know that the bird is dropping the ball. And y represents the height. That's what it says right here. The height is y. Okay. And we want to know when it hits the top of the 32-foot tall pine tree. Okay. Well, the height of the ball, we want it to be 32. So what I can do is take this 32 and then plug it in for y. And that's the height I'm looking for. Okay. So I get 32 equals 81 plus 16t squared. This should actually be a minus. I apologize. Anyway. Now I need to solve this equation. There's multiple ways we can solve this equation. One way would be to isolate our t squared term, okay, and then get rid of the coefficient, and then take the positive and negative square root of both sides, and then figure out which one actually makes sense given the context. But since we're working on factoring right now, what I'm going to do is try to factor this. So 
whenever we're factoring and solving equations, we want to get one side equal to zero. So I'm going to get rid of this 32 by subtracting it on both sides. Okay, so this is going to be zero equals, and then 81 minus 32 is going to give me 49. So I get zero equals 49 minus 16 t squared. And if you notice, this is actually a difference of squares. 49 is seven squared, and 16 t squared is just four t quantity squared. So I can actually rewrite this using my factoring pattern as seven minus four t times seven plus four t. Okay, and if you really wanted to, you can multiply this out to just see if this works. But anyway, I'm gonna bring down the zero. And now I can use the zero product property to see what my t values are gonna be. So I have zero equals seven minus four t, or zero equals seven plus four t. Okay, I'm gonna solve this one first. I'll add four t on both sides, four t, equals seven, and then divide by four, and I get t equals seven fourths, which is gonna be one and three fourths, or 1.75, I'll just write that down. And then if I solve this one, I'm gonna subtract four t on both sides. So I get negative four t equals seven, then divide seven. then divide negative four. So I get t equals negative seven fourths or negative 1.75, okay? And I'm gonna reject this because this is basically saying that I would have to go back in time. Negative time doesn't really make sense in this case, okay? So I'm gonna reject these solutions and my only solution is gonna be t equals one and three fourths or 1.75. So if I go back to the, to the question, so if I go back up to the question and see what it's asking, after how many seconds does the ball hit the tree? So I'll just write that here. The ball hits the tree after 1.75 seconds. All right, so now we've successfully answered this question, so now we're done.